Now this morning we're at Indo-Pacific Sea Farms in Hawaii and we're going to do a little demonstration here. We're going to go fishing in one of our 500 gallon fiberglass tanks here. This is a 500 gallon bee bottom tank with heavy aeration. I'm going to take a little dip net and dip it in and scoop out some amphipods. These are reef amphipods, little grammarid shrimp. And they are among nature's most effective grazers in the reef environment. Now, in scooping out these amphipods, we have also scooped out some algae, and they are clinging to the algae because that's their, not only their food, but their habitat. And uh, a tank like this can produce, uh, oh, at any given time, there are uh, literally tens of thousands in there. And uh, if you look carefully at them, you can see that some of them have um, a little orange tint underneath their abdomen. Not sure if you can really see that on this camera, um, but about one in every 20 or so has a uh, an egg mass that would indicate it's a gravid female, meaning that it's about to release those eggs into the water column, uh, where the eggs will undergo their larval development, developing into the various uh, uh, stages common to shrimp, including the uh, the Nauplii stage, various stages, various molts all taking place in the plankton and uh, eventually developing into an adult amphipod. Now, at that time they settle, uh, they become less planktonic and more benthonic or benthic, meaning living close to the bottom. And of course, in the context of a reef aquarium, uh, they would land on the rocks and on the sand bed and on the glass and commence grazing algae and uh, what we call a non-specific algal film, kind of stuff that develops when you put a bare substrate in the marine environment. And the type of algae that grows is often difficult to identify and marine botanists sometimes call it GATGO. GATGO is an acronym, stands for green algae that grows on everything. And I learned that many, many years ago as a grad student. I was doing some work with succession in reef environments and I brought in some samples to one of our marine botanists of the time, Dr. Max Doty, Professor Doty at the University of Hawaii. and. Uh, he looked at it and said, oh, he looked at my sample and said, oh, that's GATGO. Now, I had never heard of that term, and I said, what's, what's GATGO? He said, that's green algae that grows on everything. Don't bother trying to identify it. It's just GATGO. So, amphipods like GATGO, we can state unequivocally that part of that is made up of diatoms, Catoceros being the most dominant in this environment and other types of microalgae, single-celled planktonic algae, as well as the low turf algae that's difficult to see until it gets macroscopic, that is visible with the naked eye, and by that time it's becoming a nuisance. So the benefit of having large numbers of amphipods in your reef aquarium is that they get to work on the algae when it's microscopic, before you can even see it. And they continue eating that algae as it develops. Now, if you want to get a population of these going in your reef tank, you can add them directly. Or you can set up a separate system 
For example, using a 10 gallon tank and the Nano Lagoon components that we described in earlier videos, the same sort of filtration and lighting system for the 10 gallon Nano Lagoon works terrific for an amphipod breeding tank. You set that up according to the instructions in the videos and you just add one of our amphipod breeding kits which includes the amphipod breeders and uh, some beneficial algae, namely the green ulva, the Tang Heaven, and the red grassalaria, Tang Heaven Red, uh, which the amphipods love to feed on and they live in it and breed in it and form a happy community. And then you can take a standard aquarium dip net, uh, as we just did in this big tank, and swish it through your amphipod breeding tank, harvest some of those pods, and transfer them to your sump or refugium or to your main tank. Now if you have a planted refugium, that's, that's terrific because it's already part of your system and you should have lots of macro algae growing in there and just add the amphipods or add the entire amphipod breeding kit uh, which comes with some flake food by the way the amphipod flakes are included in that kit and put that all in the refugium or the lighted sump and let nature take its course now if you want to order this from Indo-Pacific Sea Farms the amphipod breeding kit is just $29.95 if you order it with other livestock. If you order it alone, it's $39.95 plus the shipping. Uh, so consider becoming an amphipod aquaculturist to get a handle on the nuisance algae growth in your main tank. And certainly consider setting up an amphipod breeding tank, a dedicated tank, so that you will have a continuous supply. And by the way, they're great for feeding to marine fishes and uh, especially the uh, mandarin gobies love them, angel fishes, uh, seahorses love live amphipods and it's a terrific living diet and unlike the, the uh, flake and powdered diets and pelletized diets, when you feed a live diet, whatever is not consumed directly by the fishes survives. It does not pollute the system.